There was 37 years ago that Ron Fenton was shot in the back of the head in the line of duty whilst working for Victoria Police. 37 bullet fragments would stay lodged in his brain. Five weeks ago, Senior Constable Ron Fenton was shot in the back of the head by a gunman when the police car he was driving was ambushed at Beaumaris. Fragments from an exploding bullet lodged in his brain. He was given only hours to live. These weren't the only challenges Ron would experience in his lifetime. He was bitten by a man claiming to have HIV. He was asked to recover a baby's corpse from Williamstown Beach. And he witnessed the everyday tragedies we experience as police. Despite all of these events, Ron's long battle with post-traumatic stress injury, or you'll hear me call it PTSI, truly began when he was assaulted by a notorious criminal outside a Werribee nightclub in 2008. The offender threatened to, and I quote, get a gun and do a better job than Kai, unquote. This was a reference to the man who murdered a security guard in 1984 before opening fire onto Ron's police car in Beau Morris, where he would almost die. During 2017, and as a result of Ron's declining mental state, Yogi came into Ron's life, courtesy of the Defence Bank's Defence Community Dogs program, and Ron being eligible as a previous serving member of the Army Reserves. Yogi, the chocolate Labrador, would change Ron's life. Before getting Yogi, Ron attempted suicide five times, something he was very open about. He was using 17 psychotropic drugs daily to curb his PTSI symptoms, and had been admitted to hospital many times where he would stay for a week or two. Although Yogi was funded through the Defence Bank, the ongoing costs of maintaining Yogi were met by Ron. To alleviate the financial burden, Ron applied to have Yogi's costs claimed through WorkSafe as a legitimate medical expense related to his workplace-induced PTSI. He said, and I quote, I figured I should ask for work cover to pay for my dog because he is my medication, unquote. Ron made a claim to work cover and was optimistic where he described there was head nodding at the meeting he had with WorkSafe. But three weeks later, he received a letter in the mail, a rejection of claim. They cited a lack of evidence behind companion dogs for this decision. After much, much back and forth, a deal was struck. WorkSafe agreed to pay for Yogi's expenses from the day Ron brought him home until the day that Yogi would cease to perform his duties. WorkSafe also agreed to cover the costs for a replacement dog as long as the dog came from an accredited provider. Yogi's law was supposed to have been formally created, but due to settling out of court, it wasn't. This now means if you don't go down the path of seeking to be the test case in court, you must access WorkSafe's non-established new and emerging treatments and services, or NeNets, policy to seek compensation for psychiatric assistance dogs' costs. Further, a recent study by Mind Dog Australia, who supply and train dogs for people with psychological issues, found that assistance dogs, and I quote, decreased the use of psychiatric or other health care services in 46% of participants. I'd also like to make it clear that my push for access for claims for psychiatric assistance dogs is not at the expense of other therapies. I know most of you won't be surprised by Ron's experience with WorkSafe, as their conduct has been under question for some time. Ombudsman Deborah Glass has on two occasions, in 2016 and 2019, handed down scathing reports regarding WorkSafe's dealings with complex claims. In 2019, Ms Glass said WorkSafe had not learnt from the 2016 report and that changes were still needed to be made to WorkSafe's culture, despite the state governments agreeing to the 15 recommendation in the earlier report. She further said, shockingly, that, and I quote, if anything, the evidence strongly suggests that much of the impact of my 2016 report has been to drive these practices underground. Agent staff were told to be careful what they put in writing in case the Ombudsman sees it. To reiterate the issue, if someone is eligible for work cover as a result of psychological injuries and they would like to access the knee nets policy for a treatment option, such as an assistance dog, they will find that they, one, won't have a policy to look at to know if they're eligible for compensation payments or not. Two, won't be able to rely on previous decisions to base their case on because there is no precedent. Three, will need to engage legal representation at significant cost because they will need to engage in the legal process to prove the evidence behind assistance dogs, despite others already have presented this evidence in the past. And four, will likely wait many months for the outcome of their claim. This is a traumatic and risky process for people who already have mental and physical injuries. 
To remedy this, I'm asking the government to do two things. Firstly, review its NeNets policy to ensure that future claims for canine and equine therapies treating PTSI are considered without delay and not unfairly denied in the future. And secondly, to ensure that WorkSafe's NeNets policy is publicly available and notes available compensation for different types of treatments and services, including the criteria to make such a claim. This will allow transparency for those seeking claims and for their legal representatives. It's not glamorous, it's not a populist issue, but it will help people who are really, really suffering. When, when they diagnosed me with three months to live, obviously the uh, black dog, the suicide dog, jumped off my shoulder and started barking in my face. And Yogi just basically stood between us and uh, said, you know, bugger off, he's mine. And so a brown Labrador beat the black dog. Lastly, I know Ron is up there watching, and, and as will many of Ron's supporters be online, uh, and many other current and previous emergency service workers with PTSI as well. Ron wanted Yogi's Law mandated within the system, and it's now at the Chamber to make this happen. I commend this motion to the House.